Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today we're going to talk about the photography trends of this decade. It's almost 2020 and so um, we've gone through a long period of time where popular stuff has changed like music, sports. Uh, but today we're going to talk about photography because I do photography. Adobe just released um, a blog article, uh, photography trends of the 2010s and basically they go through each year in what was the most popular. I'm just going to sort of go through it and talk about my experiences with it. I've only been taking photos for maybe three, four years now. So that's 2016 around there. So I won't necessarily know or have the right knowledge to talk about like 2011, 2012 and stuff like that. But I thought it'd be interesting to just talk about it and just if you guys have any uh, insight, just comment below as well. So yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into it. Okay, so 2010, uh, Adobe says it's double exposure. Double exposure now is still very popular. Um, I just think back then it was a different type of double exposure. Like the subjects were different. So before the subject was like a face and a landscape, and then those two would merge. A lot of the Photoshop tutorials um, I've been checking out uh, on double exposure involve those two things, landscape and portrait. Now I see a lot of people doing two portraits together of like the same subject or just switching it up a bit or not even doing double exposure in post, like in Photoshop, in post editing, but they actually do it a lot more in camera, whether this is with like a, something reflective, like a phone or a crystal or something like that, like a prop or shooting through a window. A lot more people are doing it in camera because they found different ways and it saves time in post. There's probably even like lens filters that you can buy that will create a double exposure effect. I'm gonna read the description. It says, um, in 2010, we saw low unemployment rates. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Oh, okay, it's talking about what happened in that time period. And it still proves its relevance today. So yeah, uh, I agree with that. Um, 2011 is street photography. And the photo they used is something that I see on Instagram a lot, like the same sort of composition. Um, and so street photography now, um, especially if you're in from a big city like Toronto and New York or Chicago or LA, you see these type of photos a lot. So I wouldn't say it's, you know, disappeared. I think it's more relevant than double exposure nowadays. But the reason why street photography really worked out is because of like the different subjects in it. Like in this particular photo, it shows the sky, the busy city, and then the person in the middle. So I think the big reason why um, street photography is so popular is because there's just so many things to look at. And oftentimes the, the colors produced are really nice because of the sky. So once again, I wasn't there for that. I think it was actually pretty prevalent a couple years ago or even now, much more than double exposure. I would even say like 2018 was um, street photography as well. So 2012 is macro photography. So I have to say, I do not see this. The other two I see all over Instagram everywhere. Macro photography is not even a thing. I've never seen it on Instagram. It's not very popular. And I think just because it's so basic, um, there's not a lot of depth to it. And I think it's a big reason why um, you just don't see it on Instagram. To me, I don't see a lot of uh, wildlife photographers either because I feel like that's very similar. I was looking through this list and wildlife's not even on this, but I think it should just because I've seen it so much. Or maybe it was a lot more prevalent like before the 2010s because I feel like a lot of the older uh, folks in photography do it. But macro photography, I've never really seen a lot of macro photography. The most I've seen that's macro is take a picture of a flower or a plant. So if you guys don't know what macro photography is, it's basically a very, very close up photo. So here they use a ladybug um, and maybe people don't like it cause it's a ladybug and like, it's kind of creepy to look at, but maybe they're talking about like the average hobbyist, like the average person who gets a camera. They're gonna take like close up pictures like this because they like the blurred out background. That's why I was mentioning like the, the flowers and stuff like that. 2013 iPhoneography and smartphoneography. I've never heard of that. Um, you can just say mobile photography or something like that, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, just because I think 2013, that's when everyone was starting to get phones and stuff like that. 2013, I was in what grade? S I was in grade five. Yeah. So around that time I had an iPad and an iPod. So, um, yeah. And I think that's around when Instagram was getting popular or started. So it makes a lot of sense that, um, iPhones or just photography using phones was getting popular at the time. And the picture they use is actually funny because I feel like that is a trend by itself. Taking pictures of like puddles. I've seen it a lot like last year where people will take a lot of like reflection shots. Um, so I'm not sure if you can make that a big category because it's very specific, but 
Um, that's something that I saw a lot of. So yeah, they, uh, they're talking about shot on iPhone. Um, that hashtag is still pretty big today. But the difference now is that the price difference between a smartphone and a camera, like a good camera is not that big of a difference. So I think people are just getting the camera because there's a lot of good cheap cameras now um, and, and phones are expensive now. So um, I think um, there's less iPhone photography. Obviously there's more people taking pictures, but as for people who are trying to take professional pictures, there's more people with like entry level cameras than people with phones. 2014, flat lay nulling, nulling. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. I've never seen this or never heard of the term at least. Um, I have seen this stuff on like Pinterest and like blogs, but nothing that the mainstream really gravitated to. So it says food bloggers and professional photographers took the alternative photo layout for the crisp colors and clean presentation and brought to their overall aesthetic. I'm sure that a lot of people did this on like blogs for sure. Um, even then 2014 blogs were probably pretty big and not as dead as they are now, but this is a Pinterest thing. Like I'm, I'm a younger fellow, you know, like I don't, I don't really check this stuff out. Um, for me, this looks a lot more reminiscent to like photo books or like cookbooks or something like that. The closest I've seen is like a lot of people do study notes and they take a picture of like their desk or something, some aesthetic thing. Like if you've ever seen the back to school videos and how they lay it out, like those uh, beauty YouTubers, um, that's the most I've seen to this sort of layout, but I've never heard the term. I've never really heard either term. Like there's two terms here and I don't even know either of them. Uh, maybe that's my fault. 2015 selfies. So this surprised me when I looked at the list initially, because I'm like, yo, selfies are so predominant in today's culture. And like, it's a normal thing. It used to be like sort of frowned upon or like cringy. Even now it is like, you see some people taking selfies and stuff like that. I think what normalized it was vlogging. Like a lot of people have vlogged. Um, before you saw someone with a selfie stick, you thought they were crazy. You still think they're crazy, but you sort of like understand now. But selfies, that's only four or five years ago. And it seems like selfies have been a like around for a long, long time. So definitely selfies had to be somewhere here. Like selfies had to be because it was like coined a term and it probably was a new term in the dictionary at some point. Um, so 2015 makes sense. Um, and once again, it was after like all the Instagram stuff. Like once Instagram popped up, I think a lot of trends happen. It even talks about selfie sticks in this um, description. So that's kind of cool. And uh, what I really liked about selfies was people didn't really care about making the picture look really, really good. It was like raw, like it was it was unfiltered, but now it's sort of become filtered. You couldn't just take a picture by yourself. It's so much easier now with the front facing camera. So 2016's Instagrammable art installations. So for me personally, I was only really introduced to this maybe two years ago, a year ago. I went to my first one last year but it was definitely a thing before I went um, because I've seen different stuff like this. I think 2016 makes a lot of sense um, because I've seen it around. I just never been to one really. You'll see some photos of me there right now on screen somewhere. It's actually something I was thinking about doing if I ever really, really get popular and really have money. Um, I'm gonna I'm a make a art installation like this, but it's really cool, it's really cheap. Uh, you can go with your friends, take nice pictures and stuff like that. But I don't think before this, there was a reason to have something like this, like before Instagram, Instagram really changed it. Now everyone's like sort of like their own brand, like have their own personal brand. So like they want to have like a place to take photo shoots without paying a lot because besides Instagrammable art installations, you would have to book out a studio and have nice st things and stuff like that and bring props in with Instagrammable art installations. It's so, so cheap, right? Everyone has access to this and it has really cool things and stuff like that, like stars and like cool backgrounds and backdrops and stuff like that. And you're probably spending like $20 compared to like a, a studio. So, but there's no chance this would have existed before Instagram. Now everyone sort of wants to look good and have low photo shoots. What normal person was having photo shoots 10 years ago? Just like a normal person, not a model, just a normal person. No one, not every guy in high school, just paying me to take photos of them. 2017 aerial drone photography. So I'm going to add, um, rooftoping, like rooftop photography as well, which I guess can kind of fit with this because it has an aerial view, but drone photography was huge, but now it's not huge because there's like a lot of regulations. You can't fly in a certain area. You have to like get a license and stuff like that. And that takes a lot of time. So like less people are doing drone photography just because the barrier to entry is a lot greater now. And so, I think that's the same reason a lot of people were kind of intrigued by rooftop photography because not a lot of people could get to that level of access, if you know what I mean. 2018 says travel photography, but I think like 27, 2018 was really a mix of the travel, the drone, the rooftop, 
um, and all that sort of stuff. Just like cool views, you know what I mean? 2016 was when uh, Drake dropped views. Um, so I think after that, everyone was sort of like, just trying to like be bigger than life, you know? Like the city stuff got very popular. The nature stuff got really popular. Sam Calder and a bunch of those um, travel photographers and videographers got really big around that time. So it makes sense that um, that was the big trend. The orange and teal look got very popular. And then 2019, photography versus activism, which I've never seen personally. Maybe that's because of me, just not following the right people, but I've literally never, like this photo that they're showing me, I've never seen it. Or like never seen anything like it. So I'm gonna skip over what they said for 2020s because it doesn't talk about anything specific, I think. Um, honorable mentions, HDR. I definitely remember HDR and I remember everyone using it, but I don't think it makes your photos look that great. Sin Simnographs. So simnographs are basically like a still photo with a moving video part. I think that's become more popular now. Um, and that reminds me of something. 2020 is probably gonna be these two things, concert photography and 3D photos. You already see 3D photos getting pretty popular now, or even film photography. Film photography should have been somewhere here because it's making a comeback. So 3D photos, film photography, concert photography. And the same reason people really were intrigued by the rooftoping and the drones and stuff like that, I think is the same reason people are starting to get into concerts because of the, the level of access you get. It says 2015 was time-lapse. If time-lapse means long exposure, I get that, but I also believe that has become a trend itself nowadays. But it doesn't seem like 2015, it seems like a 2017 type of thing, you know? 2016 filters, filters were a big thing. They put selfies as 2016 as well. So it makes sense that two of those came together. Portrait mode makes sense of the iPhone, um, Samsung, Google Pixel phones came out with the portrait mode. Mirrorless cameras, 2018. So I got a mirrorless camera, definitely a trend. I got mine in 2017, I was ahead of the curve. Um, and the Instagram, 2019, that doesn't, what does that even mean? How is Instagram 2019? It's been, I swear it's less popular nowadays. You should put an Instagram story somewhere. I think that would have made more sense. So food photography, 2013. If I'm not mistaken, the flat lay was 2014. So it makes a lot of sense. You know, those Pinterest people. But yeah, um, as for my predictions for the upcoming um, year and decade, I think a lot more people are gonna start using filters. Um, I would even say the star filter was a really, really big trend this year. Um, a lot of people were using it. And so I, I think once everyone uses it, it's gonna be the big trend of 2020 because there's a lot of things people do that the public doesn't have knowledge of. So like the, the 3D photos, people don't really know how to do that. The film stuff, people don't really know how to do that. The concert stuff, the filters, people like, how do you do that? And then one last thing, I think 2019 should have been photo manipulation. A lot of people were taking like stock photos and different types of photos and creating new backgrounds and changing the whole look of a photo completely. Like they would take a photo of someone in the forest and add stars to it and stuff like that. I think that was a big thing. A lot of editing um, came in the way this year. There's whole accounts um, literally just doing that. Like they don't even take photos. They take stock photos and then they make it into a photo itself. Um, so let me know what you think the trends were. I think I was talking a lot this video, but you know, whatever. No one else was gonna make this video. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.